All right, welcome to the next section. Um, it's the uh, array and object spread. So just to be clear, those three dots there at the top of the screen does not mean that we didn't finish filling out this code pen. That's the actual syntax for the spread operator. So that's the spread operator we're going to be looking at. So a little bit about the spread operator. The spread syntax allows an expression to be expanded in places where multiple arguments for function calls or multiple elements for array literals or multiple variables for destructuring assignments are expected. Okay, so let's put, let's simplify that. It allows us to take an object or an array and in places where multiple objects or multiple things are expected to spread that out. And so let's go ahead and look at what this looks like now in, um, in code. So we have um, a, an array called A, which contains the values one, two, three, and a flat array which is spread over a comma four and five. So what that would equal is a, a flat array would equal one, two, three, four, five. So we can think about spreading. Uh, the way I like to think about it is removing the outer layer of a curly brace or the square brace. So if you have an array, basically chop off the outer braces and put those values right into where you're um, inserting them. So we, now we have an object, so const b, has properties A, B, and, and D, and D contains an object with a value A. So now we have a flat object, const flat object equals spread over B and the property C. And what that would equal is an, a new object which contains A, B, C, and D. Um, so something to, something to point out, notice that D still contains or D still points to an, a sub-object, right? A equals one. So when we use the spread operator on objects or arrays, it's just doing a spread of that first layer. It's basically creating a shallow copy of whatever was in that original object or that original array. And so we're not gonna be deeply flattening or um, deeply spreading on these objects or arrays. Um, and one more, more thing to point out, notice that C came last here, but in this object here, C is in the middle. So it's worth noting that within objects, arrays or uh, order is not guaranteed. In most browsers, order is preserved, just as kind of a, how the browsers work, but the order of properties is not guaranteed as per spec. They could be out of order because objects are really just, they're just hash maps, right, of keys that point to values. So order doesn't have anything to do with it. Um, let's think, think though, as an example, what if on this line here, if instead of C equal three, this was A equals 10, what would this final object look like? This first property here, A, would be 10. So if you have an, so if you're gonna spread over an object and then have a new property after that, that new property could overwrite whatever's in that other object because keys must be unique. Right? If you wanted to um, do it the other way around, you wanted to name some properties, but then have those be overwritten by anything in the object, you could put those before the object that you're spreading over there. All right, the next section is rest parameters. And this uses the same syntax, just like a, um, just like different uh, like a plus symbol in JavaScript means different things based on different context. Like a plus symbol could mean um, string concatenation, or it could mean a ma the mathematical, excuse me, the mathematical plus operation. This operator is has different meaning in different contexts. So in the context of destructuring assignment, this is now called a rest operator, the rest parameter. So when we use it in destructuring assignment, the rest operator uh, operator assigns the remaining or the rest of the values to a variable. So if you have a large object that contains A, B, C, D, and E, and in your object, um, in your parameter destructuring assignment, you're destructuring A and B, you can put everything else in others. So in this case, A would equal one, B would equal two, and others would equal an object which contains C, D, and E. So this is a useful way to um, this is a useful way to pull things out of objects. If you know a key and you want to pluck something from an object, or you can almost like, like you could think of it as filtering things out of an object, right? This is a useful technique. 
So let's go ahead and move on to the activity. The activity is write a function which accepts an object describing a user. Return the user data extended with an admin role such as admin is true and accomplish this using these techniques, these, uh, these tools, array and object spread and rest parameters. We'll go ahead and pause the video now and do that. Okay, we're back. We're gonna complete that first activity. We're writing a function which accepts an object which describes a user. And we're gonna give that user an admin role. We'll say const, so this, this could be called make admin. Const make admin accepts a user and it returns a, we're gonna use the technique of doing um, implicit returns of an object. So what we're gonna return is we're gonna return all the values that are contained within the user object and a new property called admin, which is true. So see how this works? We're gonna return a new object which contains the existing user values and we're extending them now with this admin is true property. So let's go ahead and log out what this looks like. If we do a make admin of our person object, console.log make admin of person. There we go. Dave is now an admin. So I think this might be a good opportunity to show um, using another technique. In the first training section, we talked about a technique called currying. And currying, if you remember, is taken, taking an, a function and splitting that function out into multiple functions which return each other, nested functions, that it can be used to create configuration or, um, or saving of values in one way or the other. So I'm going to go ahead and rewrite this a little bit, and I'm going to take instead of make admin, we're going to call this. Um, um, well, we'll we'll keep it called make admin, and we're going to accept a value of is admin, and that's going to return a function called user. So now what we can do with this is rather than um, using it directly, we can make new functions. We'll say const um, add admin role equals make admin of true. And we can make another function, const remove admin role equals make admin of false. So see this, we've taken this function and extended it be able to make new functions for us. We've written code that returns functions, or, or in, other, in other words, we've, we're writing code that is writing code for us. So now what this is going to look like, let's, let's call this, so console.log add admin role to person. And then we'll do, and then we'll remove the admin role. All right, I think I've, I must have an error somewhere. This is live coding, even though it's a even though it's in a video. Oh, I've spelled role wrong. There we go. So take comfort that in even in live training videos, someone makes mistakes. What's the problem here? Oh. I've misspelled the word false. We should all have a, good, some good fun on my behalf. And I'm still not working correctly here because we're constantly returning true. So let's take is admin and we'll return admin with the value is admin. 
All right, so now we've taken this object and we've extended it with admin capabilities and then we've removed those admin capabilities. We can make this even a little nicer. We'll just call this property admin and then using a technique um, where we're gonna create objects which have the same key as their value name. We can shorten that a little bit. There we go, there's our final version. So our admin is gonna take a role, take a username, and then we're gonna use this curried function to create new functions for us, and using these new functions, add and remove admin roles. Okay, let's take a look at the next activity. So the next activity says, write a function which accepts an object describing a user. This object contains given name and family name, which is something we have here commonly. Right, we have some internationalized names. We don't want to make assumptions about um, first names or last names, but we'll have family and given names. So what we want to do is return the user data, but extend that with a field called common name, which is the given and family names concatenated together. So go ahead and pause the video now and work on that activity. Okay. We're back go ahead and move this code. So we're going to write a function which describes a user. Let's see. This our object here has already got it. So let's create a um, const um, I think common name is a function which accepts a user. And from that user, what we want to do is actually not just take the whole object in, but we want to destructure out properties from it. So we want to take the user, and from it, we want to pull out the given name. We want to pull out the family name. And we don't want to lose any properties, right? We want to pass these through. So we'll take everything else in, the v in that object, and we'll assign it to... Um, the other properties, we'll call that props. The other properties of the object. And we'll use object, um, the implicitly returning of an object to return an object which contains a new field called common name, which is the result of the given name and the family name. And it contains all of those other properties. So there are a couple different ways we can do this. And I'll go ahead and log out some examples. We can see what that looks like. So right now we've destructured out given name and family name, but we have not put them back in the object. So let's see what happens when we log this out. So we've been returned an object which has an age, a common name, and a user ID. But because we've we destructured out from the object given name and family name, when we have the rest of the values, right, using this rest property here as the rest parameter, that contains everything except what we destructured out. So when we put props back here and we spread over props, this now includes everything except given name and family name. So if we want to keep these, We'd have to include them back within our object we're returning. So like I mentioned before, this is one technique that's very useful um, with, with uh, working especially with methods and properties, parameters coming into methods. Um, can also be very useful if you want to filter out properties from an object like we saw when we just had props, right, and we returned that, and it did not contain given or family name. This is a this is kind of a, a fast way of filtering properties or removing properties from objects. Okay, that's that finishes up the array and object spread section. Next section we'll move on to is promises.